Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to be showing you our part three of our basement makeover. So if you missed part one and part two, in part one we wrapped this beam and we made it a really big faux beam. And then in part two, we redid our kitchen area. And then today we are tackling the living room portion. So I'm really excited to show you the final piece of this and how all of this pulled together. One thing I've always wanted since we've lived here is to have some kind of fireplace down here. So I thought if we were going to be redoing this area that we could put some kind of faux fireplace on a mantle. And that idea is kind of what stemmed this whole project. I wanted to do that and then I thought, well, I probably could do the kitchen for really cheap too and just kind of redo this whole area. The first thing Thomas is doing here is he is measuring out exactly where he's going to be building the fireplace. I'm not even sure if that's what you would call this, but whatever the fireplace is going to be sitting on, that is what he's framing in right here. I will have a list of all of the materials that he used to build this down in the description box below. You can tell I'm not doing a normal framing job because this is going to carry a lot of weight on it. It's going to carry the mount, the TV, the mantle, and the fireplace. So I'm just backing it up a little extra before I do my traditional vertical framing up and down. So just making it a little extra strong. He's using this plywood just to cover the fireplace and then we are going to be putting up shiplap over the top of this. The shiplap that we use is also just plywood. He cuts it down into eight inch strips and then he will be paneling it to this other plywood. Okay, so I totally skipped this part on purpose because we initially decided to paint it green. This was my idea. I really wanted a deep green color down here in the basement. And once it was up next to all of the wood, I felt like we looked like we were in a cabin. So I ended up changing my mind really quickly once I saw the mantle and everything on here. I was like, no, we gotta paint this all white. So we do end up painting it back white and I use this color throughout the rest of the room down our hallway on the top portion of our wall. So we do end up using this color and I love it up against the white. I just did not love it here on this main wall. As far as the mantle itself goes, 
that was kind of skipped over too but it's basically exactly how we built the beam so if you want to go back and watch our part one video where he builds a faux beam he built our mantle the exact same way I actually sold the TV console that we had in our basement before for 200 bucks. And with that $200, we bought this fireplace off Amazon. I will also have that linked in the description box below. However, the original price was $298 if I remember right. And we bought one that was technically used. It said that there might be a dent on the box. So maybe it was a returned item or something like that. But they had multiple of the used for $200. It was $100 less and it was still in perfect condition you could tell they had actually never even opened it out of the package so if you can find it used definitely do that because you'll end up saving a hundred dollars the footage that i got of thomas putting these shells in is has also somehow been deleted so he is going to explain in just a second how he built these shells and what materials he used for those Somehow this footage got deleted, so we skipped the part where I put these shelves in. The biggest part of doing these shelves was we didn't want it to stick past this. So I did a one by six, so it came flush with that. Well, it's actually one by five and a half, or five and a quarter. And then I have a one inch piece of trim, one by three. And then underneath I did a one by two, just to give it the support on each side, and shot it in with pin nails. basement I wanted to make some of the drop cloth curtains that I have like all over my house so I just wanted to show you guys what these look like when you pick them up at Home Depot or Lowe's I get the 4 foot by 15 foot canvas drop cloth and then I will fold this into a curtain and we'll hang it on our curtain rod before you hang up your drop cloth curtains make sure that you steam them because they are extremely wrinkly also these kind of smell a little bit weird they remind me of a tent like when you open up a tent that same smell is what these smell like and i like to give these a good spray down with some room spray and i find that it kind of gets rid of that smell pretty quickly The curtain rod I picked out was from Target and we paid $27 for this. This extended the length that we needed it to. We needed a really long one just so it would fit over our sliding doors. And then make sure when you buy this kind of setup that you get rings big enough to fit around the curtain rod you bought. There are smaller rings, so just make sure that if you're buying the curtain rod, you might want to be buying the rings together just to make sure that they fit. Okay guys, well that's everything for this video and this video will conclude our basement series. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not yet hit that red subscribe button, make sure that you do that and we will see you guys in the next video.